Hello, movie fans. <laughs> My name is Mary Lyle. I'm the director of education, and I'm joined today by our curator, Kim Clonch, who is also Hello. another movie fan. And so <laughs> we're going to be talking about Singing in the Rain. And Singing in the Rain was released in 1952. It was directed by Gene Kelly and Stanley Donnan. And it was produced by Arthur Freed. At MGM, he had what was called the Freed Unit. And that unit was the unit that made all of those famous musicals. Now, before he became a movie producer, he was a songwriter. And his writing partner, his name is Nacio Herb Brown. Fun fact for New Mexicans. He was born in Deming, New Mexico. And the two of them wrote many, many wonderful songs. These songs are the basis of this movie. Arthur Freed contacted Adolph uh, Green and Betty Comden, and he said, I want you to write a movie and use these songs. So oh. they had to come up with a concept and be able to incorporate all these uh, great tunes. And a lot of them were in introduced earlier by other artists. Good Morning, for example, that was in a film that starred Mickey Rooney and Judy Garland. And uh, there's other songs like that are cast. Uh, it's led by Gene Kelly, Debbie Reynolds, and Donald O'Connor. Debbie Reynolds, she was only 18 years old. She was not a dancer. She knew gymnastics. Gene Kelly said, well, don't worry about it because I will teach you how to dance. Even before he was in the movies, he had his own dance studio. And so wow. he was used to training dancers. But it was very difficult for Debbie Reynolds. I mean, she spent so many hours preparing, rehearsing, learning how to tap dance. My favorite thing about Singing in the Rain that's in pop culture today, actually, is if you were to go to Disneyland Paris to their MGM or Hollywood Studios, and also Disney World to their Hollywood Studios, they actually have a... Um, it's a light pole with an umbrella attached. And if you hit the, if you hold the umbrella just right, there's a button and it actually causes water to start coming out to oh, represent the song for Singing in the Rain. There were two Academy Award nominations for this film, oh. Jean Hagen, and that was for Best Supporting Actress. And the other one was for Best Original Music Score. Jean Hagen plays Lena Lamont, you know, voice of hers that, you know, it's like, fingers on a chalkboard whenever she talks, but that wasn't her real voice. She deserved the uh, Academy Award nomination that she received for this. Uh, Sid Charisse, she was not originally supposed to be in the film, but Arthur Freed, because of American in Paris, decided that they needed to have a ballet in this film too. And so he asked Gene Kelly to put something together and so that's when they came up with the Broadway melody. Their big shindig. Yeah, the big shindig, yeah. She appears as the vamp in this dream sequence. And also another recognizable person is Rita Moreno. And she plays Zelda Zanders, the zip girl. That's a lot of zzz. A lot of zzz. Zzz. That's right. <laughs> what did you think of the costumes? To me, it didn't look like costumes. They were designed by Walter Plunkett, who was a famous Hollywood designer. In fact, he had worked on Gone with the Wind. And he commented that Singing in the Rain was harder to do than Gone with the Wind. He made Why? It. Well, because a lot of the costumes were not stock costumes. In oh. Gone with the Wind, you could clothe your extras in something that you pulled, you know, out of stock. Yeah, costumes are always underappreciated. And speaking of costumes, Debbie Reynolds, she bought all of the costumes from Singing in the Rain, especially the principal's costumes, mm -hmm. and she preserved them. So what's your favorite number in this? Singing in the Rain, honestly, because okay. it's just, it's so catchy, and it's, to me, that's my more feel-good song from that video. When I'm in the rain, that's the song that just instantly pops up in my head. As you may have heard, Gene Kelly was very sick when he did this number. Really you, you couldn't tell he was sick singing it, though. So No, you couldn't. I mean, what a trooper. They're all professionals. Donald O'Connor, 
in the make him, make him laugh, which is the name of this film series, made up that whole dance himself. Donald O'Connor would fool around on the set and make the other actors laugh. He was doing these that shtick, they call it shtick. So when they came up with the song, he, he was told, just do everything that you were doing, crack up the cast and crew. That's and that's exactly what he did. Now, Donald O'Connor came from a showbiz family. I mean, he was on, on the stage from the earliest age. He could do all those gymnastics, like those back, back flips off the wall. That was nothing for him. What was bad is that he was a heavy smoker. After Donald O'Connor finished the final filming of, of uh, Make Him Laugh, he would, was put in the hospital and he had to recover for a couple of days. He was just so exhausted. Uh, Debbie Reynolds is another one. She had to practice so hard, never having tap dance, and you're dancing with Gene Kelly and Donald O'Connor. Oh, so Lord. Her hardest number was Good Morning. And that one was very difficult for her. It was difficult for all of them. They finished the final part of that song. That's the part where they do a somersault assault over one couch. They jump on the back of another one and set it down. They had to do 40 takes to get that right. I mean, there, were bl- there was blood in her shoes. Because- Is there a character that you really liked? Cosmo? Uh, I liked his humor, his sense of humor, because he was always doing all those jabs and jibes at Lena. Uh- it's, it's just so, it's that perfect dry humor that people see nowadays, that it's just like the snide remarks that you just sit there and you're like, did, did you just say that? I would say Lena Lamont is my favorite. Uh, she just cracks me up. She's just so funny. So what do you think makes this film a classic? To me, classics are things that hit pop culture that people just don't stop talking about. Even if you've never seen it, you know the song. Mm-hmm. I was going to ask you, do you have a favorite line in the film? I'm trying to remember it like word for word. I might not remember it completely word for word, but it's Cosmo. I don't remember who he's talking to. I think he's talking to Lena. And he's talking about how she can't act, she can't dance, and she can't sing, and that she's a triple threat. My favorite line is, of course, Lena, Lena Lamont going, and I can't stand him. And, and there's a wonderful character act, actress playing the vocal coach, Kathleen Freeman. And she's a round tones, round tones, and I can't stand him. And... <laughs> Lena Lamont kept going, and I can't stand him. And she thought she was doing it just fine. But oh. uh, So all of these films we're going to discuss, I, I decided that it's going to get a Kim and Mary rating. So on a scale of one to 10, what score would you give it? I, I would give it a 10. I get it. This is my top in my top 10 all-time musicals. Now, not every movie is going to get an amazing rating like that one. Mm-hmm. You need to see it. <laughs> It's wonderful to, to discuss with someone your age, but we can both appreciate and enjoy the same thing. And to me, that's another thing that makes it a classic. We will, may not have a lot in common in other things. This is one of those things that the age gap can close because we're able to talk to each other. I would about- give this definitely a 10. So after you watch it, let me know what your favorite part, favorite scene, favorite song, favorite character just sit, drop us a line on facebook uh we might message you back we might who knows maybe mary and i might film a response to you 